Hi, I'm Mike. We've had a lot of questions come in to us uh, through our clinics, and then we've been getting messages on a lot of other questions that we're having about these gated horses. And there's one thing that I always want to put a disclaimer up before I give any answers. Number one, we're talking about trail horses. Uh, that is the only thing we deal with here, and it is trail horses. One of the things is that if they lope their horse, that they're going to lose their gait. Me personally, I think that is the furthest thing from the truth there ever has been. When you lope your horse, it frees them up. It gives them impulsion, where they're actually pushing off the rear end and working. You take a pacey type horse, where he's just moving each side of his legs together. If you lope those horses, it will get them in a three beat deal. You're breaking up that. So, and you're freeing those horses up and getting them to use their rear end. So, what we do is, you, you cannot sit here, if you can't lope your horse on a loose rein, and those horses stay here, you're not gonna be able to gate very well, okay? Because you take a horse that has a lot of impulsion, one that's hot, he's always pushing through your hands and you're always sitting here pulling on him trying to slow, slow him down. Or a horse that don't wanna go, you're constantly trying to get him to go because he don't have no impulsion in the rear end. So if you'll get those horses up where you can lope them on a loose rein and them stay in it, it's gonna help everything down through the gates that you've got. So that's just one question I wanted to address and we've got a bunch more here just a second. The next question that I've gotten here lately is, why do I need to have a foundation? All I'm wanting to do is go on a trail ride and ride down the trail and relax and enjoy. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. And it doesn't matter what breed of horse you're riding or what you're doing with your horse, you've got to have a good foundation. And what am I talking about that? We're talking about a horse that's soft, supple, responsive, and relaxed. Okay, if they're, if they're uh, responsive but not relaxed, that's not going to cut it. Or if they're relaxed and not responsive, that's not going to cut it. What we're talking about here is getting these horses where they are soft, supple, and they're yielding to everything we want. Have you ever been on a trail ride and went by a tree and there was kind of curve there and they about rip your kneecap off? These are the things that we're talking about, okay? So in order to have a safe, reliable horse, you gotta have one that's soft, supple, and light, and responsive and relaxed. That is the number one thing, relaxed, soft, supple, and all of these things, okay. The question is, is what do I mean when I say a great foundation on your horse? Here's what it is. A great foundation is whenever you can walk, trot, and canter on a loose rein. Another great part of the foundation is whenever you can do a one rein stop with just two fingers and your horse come around and stop at the walk, trot, and canter. A one rein stop at the walk, trot, and canter with just two fingers. The other thing is, is to be able to be riding along and get collection where you just barely pick up your reins, squeeze your legs together, and your horse roll up and collect and travel on out. Okay, the other thing is, is to be able to back one up with the least amount of pressure as possible. Instead of sitting here having a tug of war, just be able to pick up your reins and just the horse just come back to you. The other part of the foundation is having control of all the five body parts, the neck, the chin, the pole, the shoulders, the ribs, and the head. That is part of the chin and the neck and the pole and the ribs and the hips. If you could get all of that loose where you have control of it, your gait is going to be so much better. So that is why you have to have a foundation. The next question is, how long does it take me to get a good foundation on my horse? I don't know. That is strictly up to you and your horse. It all depends on how much time and effort you're willing to put into it. It could take a couple, uh, couple of weeks. It could take a couple of months. It could take six months. That is just all in how much effort you're willing to put into it. Okay. On the foundation part of this, no, you don't have to have a foundation on your horse in order to get him to gate. You could put on a big old shank bit. You could get a hold of him. You could drive him up in the bit with your legs. Okay, the more you do that, the stiffer your horse is going to get, the more he's going to go to pushing on your hands, okay? Then he's going to start feeling claustrophobic and everything 
and he's gonna start rearing up and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You're gonna make your horse barn sour, buddy sour, all kinds of things by doing them this way. But what I can tell you is this, we have done decided that not all gated horses gate well. This is one thing that I can promise y'all. If you will get a good foundation on your horses, if you will get them soft, supple, and light, and responsive and relaxed, your gait is gonna be so much better than it was before. So that's what I'm saying. Get the foundation on your horse. Here is another question that I keep getting. I had a lady contact me the other day, and she said, Mike, my, my horse is chewing on the bit. He's tossing his head. He's doing all these things. She said, what kind of bit do I need to get to keep him from doing that? All right, here's your, here's your deal. There is no magic bit. There is no magic bit. Everybody thinks when you got a gated horse, you got to have a special bit. You don't. The problem with the horse is, is he's stiff. He's stiff. He's resisting everything you're doing in that neck and head and throughout his body. Okay, now, they'll sit there and she said, well, when I pick up on that right rein, he's probably heavy. Isn't that the mouth? No, it's a stiff body. It's a stiff body. This is what I'm sitting here telling you and telling you and telling you. Get your horses soft, supple, and light, and the rest of those problems will just disappear. You know, lateral flexion will get you vertical flexion. Whenever you keep doing that and getting that vertical flexion, that's going to get the whole horse soft, and you keep working on your rib cage and your hips and everything, that's going to get them soft. Always be flexing on them. If you'll get those horses soft, supple, and light and giving, your head problems are going to disappear. Another thing is, I've, I've heard, you know, and I, as you all know, we ride with snaffle bits. Now, what I want you all to understand, the snaffle bit is a side pull. It is designed to pull from the side. Okay, a shank bit has a chain curb or a leather curb or something, and that thing is working off leverage. It doesn't matter what. Bits do not harm horses. It's people that harm horses in how they use those bits and their hands. I've seen people that might as well had concrete blocks for hands. What you got to develop, you know, we're wanting our horses to get soft, supple, and light. You need to get soft, supple, and light as well. Get soft with your hands where it's just two fingers to pick up and get these horses to respond. Through helping people, I have seen a lot of things. And I had a lady in here, what she would do is sit down on her butt, throw her legs forward, hang on to their face, and think that the horse was just gonna gate. That is not correct. Whenever you've got a horse, the, these horses are not lazy boy recliners. You just can't sit, kick back on them things and expect them to do all the work. You need to get involved with your horse as well. Okay, they're sitting up there like that, and after a while, the horses are sitting there jigging, they're pacing, they're running off, they're doing all kinds of stuff. Okay, what you need to do is sit up straight, let your legs hang, and what your legs are doing is creating impulsion from the rear end. Okay, that's, you can kind of get a hold of them and get your horse collected and kind of be a team member with your horse. You know, you can't sit here and blame your horse for everything going on when you're not willing to change and help your horse and be a team player. <coughs> so, you know, if you need to go get riding lessons, go get some riding lessons. Do something like that, but be a part of your horse. You need to be an athlete with your horse. Okay, I'm gonna address this one more time. I keep getting these messages to asking me what kind of gated bit do these people need to get in order to get their horses to gate. Now, here we go. If you are planning on not softening your horse, keeping him straight, and keeping him heavy, then you had, and, and you start sitting there driving him up to gate, if you've got a, sh a snaffle bit on him, I'll promise you he's gonna run plumb through it. And there's no way you're gonna be able to stop him. So what you need to do is get you a big old heavy bit and put in there a big old heavy shake bit to kind of hold him back. Now, if you're willing to do your homework here and get your horse soft, supple, and light, then no, you don't need a, a, a big shake bit, okay? 
You know, the thing about it is, for years, in all of these gated horse breeds, the show industry has, has pretty much dictated how we train and ride these gated horses. Okay, it's only been in the last 10, 20 years that people have finally figured out, look, I can go ahead and get my horse to gate and I can get him to gate naturally without all of this nonsense that I've got on him, okay? It all goes back to what I've said in other videos before. We're all so worried about our horses and worried about doing what's best for our horses and yet you go out on a trail ride and you're having a little bit of trouble with your horse and there's some older gentleman there and the first thing he tells you is you need to get a leverage bit. You need to get a shank bit and put in that horse. Look, folks. It does not have to be that way. There are people out here the same as me screaming this at the same time. Go home and do your work, get your horse soft, supple, and light, and enjoy the ride. And get him to gait naturally, and get your horse happy. It's always like I said, an unhappy horse is not gonna perform well. A happy horse is gonna perform very well, and you're gonna be happy as well. Here's one more that I, that I get a lot of. They'll, I'll get a message from somebody and they'll say, well, I got a Rocky Mountain horse. What type of gait should he be doing? Or I got a Tennessee walking horse. What should be his gait? Okay, I am not interested one bit in what type of a gait a horse is doing. Every one of these breeds has their own association and has their own things that they want their horses to do. And once again, we are not dealing with show horses here. We are dealing with trail horses, okay? So we're not looking for that perfect gait. What you got to do is get your horse soft, supple, relaxed, confident is what you got to do and let him pick his own gait that he is comfortable doing because we're on a trail ride. The main thing that you got to worry about is a smooth ride, you being happy and your horse being happy. Okay? We're, we're not in a show pen. We, we, we really don't care what these horses are doing as long as they're smooth. The only way you're going to get a smooth ride is if you've got an even four beat gait. Okay, that means each foot is hitting the ground at a separate time individually, okay? Now, just get your horse soft, supple, relaxed, and confident, and you won't have to worry about all this other stuff. Here's the last one that I'm gonna do. Um, I, keep, I keep getting this message, these messages on my softening and things, and they say, look, that is a whole bunch to do, and all we're gonna do is trail ride. Why do I need to get all of this stuff? I'm not, I'm, I'm just trail riding. As far as I'm concerned, if you're a trail rider, you need even more control on your horse. And here's why. You are not riding in this arena. This is what I call a confined area, okay? If the horse gets spooked here, where's he going? If he runs off, where's he going? I mean, we got four walls around us. We've got all this stuff in here to shut him down. But when you're out on the trail and he spooks and you don't have him where you can sit here and lightly pull his head around and yield his hindquarters and get him shut down, he could run off for four miles. Because a lot of places we go ride, there is thousands and thousands of acres there. You are out in the real world. You've got ditches. You've got cars. You've got four-wheelers. You've got other animals. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And all of these things are things that you have no control over. Okay? So I think you need to have even more control of your horse. Okay? The thing is, is soft, supple, relaxed, confident. Okay? One, if you're missing one of those things, soft, supple, relaxed, and confident. If you don't have no confidence, if your horse has no confidence, these other three, is it's gonna be okay, but it's not gonna work. If your horse is not relaxed, but he's confident and soft and supple, still not gonna work as good. If he's not soft, okay, and you've got all the others, it's not gonna work. You have to have all four. You need to get control of your horse, okay? So I think it's even more important for trail riders for the safety factor. That is what we have been screaming here for the last year. And then the reason we've been screaming it is because we sell a lot of horses and we have a lot of people come and go through this barn. It is safety, folks. It's safety. We all want to enjoy it. Nobody wants to get hurt. And we are here to try to help you. 
So just let us help you. And that's about a lot of the questions that I've gotten and I've wanted to address here today. So we're going to let it go at that. If there's anything that Joy and I could do to help you, tune in to our Rafter M Training Stables YouTube channel or here on Facebook and we'll be more than happy to help you.